Welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of Retire Eyes Wide Open. I'm Scott Landborg. Today, we're talking about COVID-19 and your financial portfolio. The pandemic continues to impact every aspect of our lives. What can you expect going forward? What should you do differently with your money? Is the worst over? What concrete things can you do to prepare for more uncertainty? We'll talk about the week's news and the money rundown. We'll talk about annuities in the world of COVID, and we'll take your questions. This is Retire Eyes Wide Open. Welcome to Retire Eyes Wide Open. Don't go into retirement with your eyes closed. Go into it with your eyes wide open. If your financial advisor and tax advisor aren't talking, someone Someone isn't doing their job. There are two systems in this country, one for the informed and one for the uninformed. You can't turn back the clock. You can only get better for the future. You're going to look back at this moment 20 years from now, and you want to know you did everything you could to position your financial life. The world is changing, and so is retirement. Hi, my name is Scott Lamborg, and I'm here to help you retire with your eyes wide open. That means having the information you need and the clarity you deserve. It means understanding and interpreting the world as it changes. It means knowing about investments, taxes, social security and estate planning, and how they're all connected. And probably most important, it's about living your best retirement life, the good life. You know, I meet with thousands of retirees. I see people doing it right. I see people doing it wrong. People that are happy, people are depressed. I see people that are informed and people that are uninformed, and I'm going to show you how to retire with your eyes wide open. The strategies and concepts discussed are for educational purposes only and do not represent specific investment tax or estate planning advice. Investing carries an inherent element of risk, and it is in everyone's best interest to consult a tax legal or investment professional. Scott Lamborg is an investment advisor representative of and advisory services are offered through USA Financial Securities Corp., member FINRA, and SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Sterling Wealth Partners is not affiliated with USA Financial Securities. And now for the money monologue. COVID-19 is one of those world events that most of us never saw coming. We've had pandemics before, but nothing like this. Nothing that shakes the core of everything we hold dear. Can't go to school, can't go to work, can't go to church, mask required everywhere, and fear as people cancel trips and travel. The 4th of July, canceled. Political rallies before an election, non-existent. This is not a normal any of us want. And yet, it is the world as we face it. Just yesterday, my wife told me of a coworker pulling his hair out, trying to get a kindergartner to do remote school, trying to teach a kindergartner how to use a computer, to stay in front of it for hours every day. This is not normal, and not a normal any of us want. And yet, despite crazy market volatility in March, this market has surged making up most of it, if not all of the ground it lost in just a few short months. People forget that recessions on average last 15 to 18 months. If you've invested in 2008, it took you five years to get back to where you were. Invest in 1999, it took you 10 years to get back to where you were. In 1929, the Great Depression took over 15 years to get back to where you were. Recessions can last a while, and so can the recovery, so why not here? Why not this time? Is the market rally that we're seeing, is it enduring? Here are some observations. One, be careful about bear market rallies. If you look at 01, 02, 08, 09, even 1929, the markets experienced strong rallies in the middle of a downward trajectory. 1929, the markets went up 50%, then down 50%, And then they ended the following year down 85% from the high. In 2001 and 2002, you retested the lows four to five different times. So be careful to understand the potential risks and know that it takes time for a recession to work itself through. Two, it's important to be picky. The S&P 500 growth index is up over 20% on the year while the value index is down 10% over the same period of time. There are winners and there are losers in this market. There are companies that do very well in this environment, companies that are winning because of this pandemic, and there are ones on the other side that are losing, that are going bankrupt. 
Look for opportunities in this market. Number three, be ready to be nimble. This market is starting to feel like 1999. PE ratios are reaching stratospheric levels. The data shows that higher price to earnings ratios means lower potential performance in the decade ahead of us. Lower profitability also means more volatility potential. So be careful. Number four, instead of burying your head in the sand, ask more questions. Times like these require being more informed. For the past decade, investors have been rewarded for for doing nothing as the S&P 500 rallied over 400% from the market lows of 2008. The next decade might require more knowledge to navigate. Some of the winners of the past might not be the same winners of the economy of the future. The most important thing is to have your eyes open to the world around you and ask your advisor how much risk you're exposed to. If you have international or small cap holdings or complex financial instruments, ask why. Any strategy, any investment, or any advisor should welcome questions and be willing to help communicate through through these challenging times. Sometimes staying the course with a long-term strategy makes sense, but it's important to consistently evaluate your options and stay informed of the changing landscape. Number five, take advantage of lower tax rates now. The federal government spent an overwhelming amount of money during the first and second quarter of this year to support the economy. The federal debt has ballooned to $26.5 trillion and counting. Finding a way to repay that debt, finding a way to repay that debt in the decades ahead, it's going to be challenging. One obvious way to repay that debt is through higher taxes, and it could include higher income taxes and higher capital gains taxes. It might make sense to harvest some of the gains that you have in your non-IRA accounts. Resetting your tax base allows you to take advantage of historically low capital gains tax rates, and the after-tax asset could produce advantages in the long-term income plan that you've put together. You also may want to consider a Roth conversion with assets that have been negatively impacted by volatility. Consider paying taxes on a portion of your IRA now if that account is lower, and when that position recovers, you can enjoy the tax-free benefits of the Roth down the road. Six, embrace a different phase of your retirement. I spoke with a client recently who just retired, and she mentioned how much the social distancing and the restrictions have taken the joy out of what she's been planning. She's been planning trips and vacations and more time with friends, and now all that's on hold. As disappointing as these adjustments have been, push yourself to try something new. Find new ways to enjoy the world around you. Try renting an electric bicycle. Go for a ride on the beach at the boardwalk. Organize a virtual game night via Zoom. Rent an RV. Take a road trip, the road trip you've always wanted. This is a unique phase in your life. And try to find as much joy as you can during this craziness. For more helpful tips in handling COVID, go to our website, retireewo.com, and click on Request a Report. We've got a special report on strategies for handling COVID. We can also send you a link to my most recent Kiplinger article that talks about COVID and strategies for coping. And that's my money monologue. And now for the money rundown. Our Money Rundown segment is where we cover the week's news. There's a lot of media sources out there that are going to give you updated information about the economy and the markets. My job is to help summarize and synthesize, pick out a few stories that are most important for you as a retiree or an investor. Story number one, second quarter GDP plunged by the worst ever 32.9% amid virus-induced shutdown. What does it mean for you? Well, this Main Street economy is rough the biggest drop in GDP in the history of the United States. And know that it's not over. It's going to take time to see the consequences of some of this stuff as we continue to work through the ramifications of this virus. There are parts of this economy that are doing great. There are parts that are having a really tough time. Take a drive down Main Street America and you'll see businesses that have shut down, businesses that won't reopen. Restaurants that are having a hard time making it on takeout only or outdoor dining. This is going to be with us for some time, for a significant period of time. Travel will continue to be impacted. So understand the world that we're living in. You've never seen GDP drop by this much. 
profitability of companies being impacted. How does that impact your portfolio? How does that impact your financial life? Well, as we talked about previously on today's episode, you have to be a little bit picky. You have to be a little bit choosy on what areas of the markets you're getting into and where there are opportunities to grow your portfolio. So I think understand the scale of this thing, the scale of what we've just gone through and the scale of the challenges ahead. Story number two, the $600 additional federal unemployment benefits stopped in July with only some states being approved for the additional $300 per month from the presidential executive order. What does it mean for you? Well, if you're unemployed, obviously you're missing that extra $600 a week and you need to evaluate your financial plan and think about where you might be able to tap. Maybe you need to adjust your retirement plan when you're going to be retiring, when you're turning on your social security and other income sources. You need to take a look at that. And if you're not collecting unemployment, how does it apply to you? I think you have to think about how this might impact the consumer. One of the reasons why the market has done so well, despite all the craziness that's been happening with COVID, is for the tens of millions of people that are on unemployment, two thirds of them have been making more money on unemployment than they were making working their job. What that means is more disposable income for those people to buy iPhones, to buy from Amazon, to buy from other retail players, and they've helped support the economy in this challenging time. If that stops for people, it could hurt those consumers. Story number three, e-commerce is surging. A Bank of America report this week showed that e-commerce accelerated 70% compared to last year. Restaurant delivery saw a 140% increase as the stay-at-home economy continues to be strong. What does it mean for you? There's no doubt that this economy has changed and it's not short term. There are parts of this financial change from COVID that will never go back to normal. There is a new normal. There are aspects that will, right? We all look forward to going out to a restaurant indoors. We look look forward to getting on an airplane, going on a trip, maybe on a cruise. But there are certain elements that will never change. People have gotten used to working at home. We've noticed efficiencies from working at home, from working remote, from adding additional people anywhere across the globe. There are things about this economy that are not going back to the way they were. So when you think about your portfolio, you think about your wealth plan, how does that impact the type of companies you might invest in? How does that impact the type of life you might want to live? How does that potentially impact real estate prices and a number of other issues? So I think it's important with what we've seen with digital commerce, we've always been moving in that direction. COVID has helped dramatically accelerate it three, five, 10 years in the future with where it might have been. How does that change your business? How does that change your retirement? And that's our money rundown for the week. And now for our Scott strategy segment, annuities in a COVID world. When people are scared, they often look to safe investments to give them peace of mind. If you're looking more closely at annuities during this pandemic, what should you be keeping in mind? What's different about looking at these strategies now than maybe pre-pandemic, and what are the risks? These type of risk management strategies are controversial. Some people love annuities, some hate them. There are some advisors that only recommend annuities. There's some that recommend for just the conservative part of your portfolio. It's a big, huge topic, and we've got a whole episode dedicated to annuities, whether they're good or bad. I encourage you to check it out on our website, retireewo.com. Today, we're talking about annuities in a COVID world. How do these strategies hold up in this type of environment? Are they more relevant? Are they less relevant? Let's talk through the strategy. Number one know that they can be complicated. Annuities are complicated instruments. There are good, there are bad, and even a good one might not be appropriate for you. So make sure you take the time to understand it. There are ones with high fees. There are ones with low fees. There are ones with no fees. There are ones that give you principal protection. There are ones that are very aggressive. There are ones that are very conservative. There are fixed annuities. There's a whole wide gamut. So understand it's a complicated exercise that might be worth it for you, but go into it and take your time to understand it. Number two, know the different types. Different types of annuities. There are immediate annuities where you give up your principal in exchange for an income stream. 
There are index annuities tied to an index, typically offer some sort of uh, minimal protection, some sort of cap on the upside, some sort of participation rate. There are variable annuities, allow you to have market exposure, but give some sort of income guarantee. So understand what the different type of annuities are that are out there, how they might be relevant for you, and which ones might make sense in this COVID world. Three, know the market you are in. This stock market is up over 400% from the bottom in 08. We're living in one of the biggest longer term bull markets that we've seen. So if you are scared, if you are afraid, I think the right annuity for you in, in a market where you think you're at a peak is probably different than one that you would buy at a market bottom. If you feel like we're at a market peak, you're gonna want an annuity potentially that helps you lock in some of those gains, that helps you take some risk potentially off the table. If we are at a market low, if we see another March type event and the market tanks, that's not necessarily the right timing to get really conservative. In that case, you might wanna look at a variable annuity that has potential not only to give you some of the guarantees or riders that you might want, but one that gives you more upside potential as well. So know that the market you are in, the market environment you're in can help guide that decision. Four, know their purpose in your plan. If you're going to have an annuity as part of your plan first, know that you can't have too much in an annuity. You have to be careful because often you give up some liquidity features with having an annuity. But know their purpose in the plan. Is the purpose income? Is the purpose growth? Is the purpose risk management? What is their purpose and how much of it is it as a part of your plan? Is it 10%? Is it 30%? Is it 50%? How big of a part of your plan is it, and what's their overall purpose? Number five, ask how much will be left. When you're talking to an advisor, a salesperson, about an annuity that you're looking to potentially purchase, it's an important question. How much money is going to be left at the end of the day? Now, you're going to want to look at the worst case scenario, but you're also going to want to look at historical scenarios and look at if the worst happens, how much is going to be left. Often with annuities, there's less money left in that account that might normally be left in a managed account. However, there might be some reasons you're okay with that if they provide, for example, more income predictability, more income security, or risk management in other ways. So make sure you understand their purpose in your plan and how much is going to be left at the end of the day. Number six, no investment options and hidden restrictions. If you're looking at an annuity, it's not only important to understand the income component behind it, what guarantees may be associated with it, but also understand what are the investment options inside the annuity. If you're in an index annuity, what are those investment choices? If you're in a variable annuity, what are those investment choices? And what are the restrictions that that annuity carrier is putting on your ability to make money inside of it? In variable annuities, the question is, how aggressive can we be inside of it? How much equity exposure can we have? Some annuity carriers let you be as aggressive as you want. You can have 100% in the market. Others will restrict you. They'll say, oh, you can only have 70% in the market. Oh, only 50% in the market. And they may add additional features where they reserve the right to be able to move you more conservatively if conditions warrant it. Often, those restrictions are to the benefit of the insurer, not necessarily to your benefit. If you own an index annuity, what indexes are available? What's their past performance look like? What does their outlook look like for the future? And make sure you're analyzing those investment options as frequently as possible. Explore structured product types. There are new types of annuities out there that you might want to explore that offer lower fees offer a buffer of protection while still offering you a lot of upside in the market itself. Of course, every investment product has its risk. You want to make sure you're aware of those and make sure you're aware of any potential hidden fees. But this new this new world of structured product type annuities is a very interesting risk reward that might be worth exploring in further detail. Eight, don't be too conservative. 
It's easy to get fearful when the market starts getting volatile. It's easy to want to lock in what you've earned. And as important as it is to trust that instinct and maybe be a little more conservative at this stage of your life, you have to understand there is another big risk that you might not be thinking about. That's inflation. With the amount of debt that this government has been adding, it could be an issue years down the road. So not only do you need to be concerned about protecting your money, but be protecting about what your money can buy in the future. So look at strategies that help give you the peace of mind that you want, but also strategies that can give you upside potential or potential pay raises. Nine, look at rising income options. When you're looking at annuities, sometimes it's tempting to look at the one that's going to give you the highest income potential. But that's not the only factor to consider. I would encourage you to ask your advisor, are there annuities that offer me an opportunity to have rising income potential? While getting the most income today sounds interesting, it's important to understand how that income is going to be impacted by inflation in the future. And there are different strategies which offer you an opportunity to have a rising income potential over time. You want to explore those. Those are our top strategies related to annuities in a COVID world. They're strategies that could work well for a portion of your portfolio, but go into it with your eyes open, knowing if it's the right strategy for you. If you want to talk about if an annuity may or may not be a good solution for you, I encourage you to go to our website, retireewo.com, and click on book a meeting. I'd be happy to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about if an annuity strategy makes sense for you or not. The last thing I would mention with annuities is be careful who is advising you. As important as it is to make the right decision about if an annuity is right for you or not, just as important is to understand who is the advisor that's going to sit across the table from you year after year and help you think through your investment options, help you think through how this fits into your overall plan. It's not just about picking the perfect strategy for now. It's also about making sure that you continue to maintain that strategy in the future to optimize all the potential benefits. And now for our listener questions. For our listeners, if you want your questions answered during the show, go to our website, retireewo.com, and click on Ask a Question. Joining us today with some of those questions is Christian Whalen, one of our client service associates at Sterling Wealth Partners. Hi, Christian. Hi, Scott. Thanks for having me. Our first question comes from Alan in Newport Beach. I'm 65 and going to retire next year. With the election approaching in November, should I hold off on my retirement for another year? How will the election affect the market? Well, Alan, thank you so much for the question. If retirement is that close, a year or less, you've got to make sure that you have a strong plan if you're going to stay as fully engaged in the market. It could make sense to be a little more conservative in light of the things that we're facing. We are facing one of the biggest drops in GDP in the history of the United States. We're facing a pandemic at a level we have never seen in this country in about 100 years. You're facing an incredibly toxic political climate with things like unemployment insurance, funding for the states, PPP loans that still have to be negotiated and had come to an agreement on. So I think it could make sense to be a little extra conservative in this environment. I've spent my whole career talking to clients about how elections often matter a little less than they might normally think. But this one is very challenging because of the other financial components tied to it, not just the election, but how it might impact tax policy, fiscal policy, if people can go in and out of their houses, if people can go to businesses. There's a lot of things on the table, so it could make sense to be a little more conservative than you might normally be, especially considering how close retirement is for you. Our next question comes from Mike in Fullerton. I lost my job in April, right before turning 55. How will the uncertainty of continued unemployment benefits affect the market and how will inflation be in the future? Mike, thanks for your question. I'm sorry you lost your job. Um, it's a really tough job market out there for a lot of people. So I'm hopeful that the sides will be able to come together in getting some more sustained additional unemployment through the end of the year. The president passed executive action in order to extend unemployment benefits beyond July. State of California is still working through the details of that, but I would anticipate they'll come to some sort of solution over the weeks ahead. 
That being said, I think with that unemployment, I think you have to reevaluate your plan. Can you take your uh, investment withdrawals earlier? Can you turn on other income sources? Can you get some part-time gig economy type work to make up the gap? All things that you could be looking at. You also asked me about inflation. I do think it's a potential risk as governments all across the globe have been injecting money into the system. Everyone has an interest in stock market prices going up, house prices going up, because it's one of the ways you get out of a $26 trillion debt is by having those dollars not be worth quite as much. So I think there's a lot of people that have an interest in there being some inflation down the road. So you want to be prepared for that by making sure you have enough exposure to the equity market, to the real estate market, to help try to keep up with inflation. Mike, good luck in finding a job and in navigating this world. And if we can help you, feel free to reach out to our office. And our final question comes from Nancy in Irvine. How is this pandemic different from previous epidemics? Nancy, thank you so much for the question. Uh, It's incredibly different than previous epidemics, and I'm sure you're well aware of some of the biggest, right? We had stay-at-home orders across this country, which you've never seen before. School closures, over a billion kids out of school across the globe, major travel restrictions, events canceled, historic government action, $2 $2 trillion plus in relief packages, record high unemployment. We've never seen anything like this pandemic before. With previous epidemics, we've not seen the level of government and business response to it. Now, we're going to be debating whether our response to this was the right response for decades to come. And we continue to debate on a daily basis what business should be open, what should be closed, what safety measures are being taken. Were the changes and adjustments worth it? What impact did they have? But regarding you and your retirement, I think it's important to keep that end in mind. Keep focused on the end goal and make sure you've got a strategy that can weather whatever curveballs come your way. This year, it was a pandemic. Next year, who knows what it could be? You want to make sure that your financial plan, your investments, your income strategy, that it has endurance and it can weather whatever curveballs might come your way. For more information about COVID and how it might impact you and your portfolio and your outlook, I encourage you to go to our website, retireewo.com. That's retireewo.com and click on request a report. Our team will send you our COVID white paper as well as a link to my recent article in Kiplinger on COVID. All great resources that I think you'll love. That's our show for this week. If you want your questions answered during the show, go to our website, retireewo.com, and click on Ask a Question. If you want to sit down and talk more about your situation one-on-one, go to our website and click on Schedule a Consult. I'd be happy to help. Go like us on Facebook to get our most up-to-date content. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play. We'll see you next time where I'll show you more how to retire with your eyes wide open. Don't go to retirement with your eyes closed. Go into it with your eyes wide open. I'm Scott Lamborn. We'll see you soon.